Well, guys, there's a lot of good charts and good videos out there showing you how to wire up a subwoofer for different unloads. Uh, basically, they are tools and enabling you to skip the fundamental understanding of what you're doing and go straight to a diagram of how to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. It's a quick and dirty way to get the job done. So what I'm going to try to do today is explain to you what you're actually doing and how that works. First of all, I'm going to cover the basics. Think of a speaker or a coil on a speaker as a load. It's a something that's resisting you from moving forward, like a turnstile at a subway station or a roadblock in traffic. This will allow so much to flow through with so much pushing back against it. Okay. If you add a second road, now with that same amount of resistance, you've literally cut the resistance in half because now twice as much traffic can flow through that resistance. This is what happens when you have uh, half of the impedance, or if you have a dual coil wired in parallel, parallel roads, right? Two roads in parallel get twice as much traffic through. Whereas if you wired it in series, you have a traffic jam on one road, and then you have another traffic jam past that on, on the same road, which resists twice. So it actually doubles the impedance. Each of these roadblocks is a ohm load. And whether they're wired in parallel, allowing two lanes to flow through, or series, allowing one row of traffic to flow through both loads, either cuts it in half or doubles it. So if you have two, two uh, ohm voice calls on one subwoofer, and you wire that in parallel, now you have one ohm of resistance because you're now sending two roads through both the loads. You're sending a load through each road. And you're able to get two rows of traffic through at one time. Whereas if you wired that two ohm and two ohm voice calls in series, you would have traffic going through one load, then going through the other load, and you'd be doubling the amount of resistance. And the same thing goes with multiple drivers. If you've got a 4-ohm driver and a 4-ohm driver, and you wire them in parallel, allowing half the power to go through one driver and half the power to go through another driver, now you have two roadblocks, two roads, so you can cut that in half, so you'll have a 2-ohm load. Whereas if you take the 4-ohm and 4-ohm driver, wire them in series, now you're going through one, then you're going through the other. So you have twice as many roadblocks on one road, Therefore, that 4 ohm and 4 ohm will become an 8 ohm load. The reason I'm explaining it to you this way is not to illustrate how to wire a setup, but to get the fundamentals of what's happening in your head so that you can look at the situation and figure out how to wire it, no matter how chaotic it is. If you've got two subwoofers that are 2 ohm and 2 ohm and 2 ohm and 2 ohm so they're dual voice call 2 ohm sub dual voice call 2 ohm sub here now you've got essentially four 2 ohm loads and you can wire those up in many different ways one example would be to make each speaker a 4 ohm load by wiring the 2 ohm and 2 ohm voice calls in series making this a 4 ohm load here and then wiring both speakers in parallel, giving you ultimately a 2 ohm load. Because now it, it just depends on how you run the highway through the, through the barriers, you see. Um, so once you understand the fundamentals of it, you can take any complicated ohm load and figure out how to wire it to something that works with the equipment that you're powering it with. Why do we need to worry about ohm loads well it's real simple uh, back in the day an ohm load of an amplifier would match the ohm load of the speaker that it was powering uh, you wouldn't want to have uh, you know a, a v12 a 900 horsepower v12 powering a go-kart it just 
Well, it'd be cool, but it wouldn't work very well. Um, the amount of electrical resistance that an amplifier needs to see to function properly, the way it was designed to function, is the ohm load. Okay, so whenever that amplifier is producing power, it's like the speaker is part of the amplifier's circuitry. It literally is part of the circuitry of the equipment. And it's not, they're not really two separate things. It's two parts of the same thing. Well, in home audio and other places where audio was very consistent, you always knew exactly how much of an ohm load you were going to have. So you could design an amplifier to provide its operating power at, say, 4 ohms. And that was always going to be a 4 ohm load. And you never, there was no, never a situation where it would be a two, mo, two ohm load. And so that wasn't a problem. With car audio and with more advanced home audio, now we can add multiple drivers to a system. And so the builders of the amplifiers had to build it so that it could handle a specific load <coughs> with some variances and have a, a range that it could operate in. And then the person putting this, this system together has to look at what speakers they're using and how they're wiring them to design a wiring layout diagram or path that will end up showing the amplifier the correct ohm load or at least an ohm load within its operating perimeters. Uh, the ohm load will change and this is a known. So even though the amplifier manufacturer says it's a four ohm load, it needs a four ohm load, that manufacturer knows that that load is dynamic and will change. But, it, but if you start out with a static 4 ohm load, you know the, the range that it's going to change. For example, if you um, use a meter to test a 4 ohm speaker, you're usually going to find somewhere between 3.5 and 4.1 or 4.2 ohms resistance. That's okay. The, the, the amplifier's manufacturer is aware that's what's going to happen. They know what a 4 ohm load is actually going to represent. Also, when the driver starts playing, when the speaker starts moving, playing the music and the sound, that movement of that coil across that magnet is going to increase the ohm load. So you're going to see a significant increase in uh, the amount of resistance as, as that power is trying to go through there. That ohm load can vary from, you know, three and a half ohms on the bottom side to, you know, eight or nine or ten ohms uh, whenever it's really getting at it, right? Again, that operating range is what they're intending for that four ohm, four ohm speaker. So if it says I need a four ohm speaker, it understands that that range is going to be between three and a half and ten ohms. It's okay with that, right? Um, and that uh, the rise of ohm load when your speaker goes to moving is also called box rise or impedance rise. Uh, depends on who you're talking to. But nonetheless, it's the movement of the, 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 the uh, cone pushing that coil across that magnet back and forth, creating its own electrical signal, its own power that impedes the power trying to get into the speaker. And uh, that's why you get box rise. That's why that uh, a thousand watt amp, at, you know, playing the right frequencies is may only be putting out a few hundred watts because the speaker's moving so much that the power's, you know, it's, it's reached, it's hitting impedance. Um, but that's a whole nother topic. So we're not going to get too far down that rabbit hole. Basically, I'm just wanting to, un wanting to create a general understanding of how to figure out what you need to do whenever you're wiring speakers to an amplifier. And it doesn't matter what kind of amplifier it is. It doesn't matter what kind of speakers it is. It could be tweeters on your A-pillar. It could be 16 subwoofers in the back. It all works exactly the same way. It can be dual voice call or single voice call subs. All a dual voice call sub does is give you more wiring options. So if you're running a dual voice call sub, you can cut that 
unload in half or you can double it. If you've got two four ohm voice coils, you can either make that a two ohm sub or an eight ohm sub, which means if you take that possibilities and then you add, you know, say you want to have eight drivers. Well, having the ability to adjust the ohm load on that one driver allows you to wire it in such a way that at the end you create the ohm load you're trying to create. And having two voice calls gives you the option of doing that in a couple of different ways. Whereas having only one voice call limits the ability to change things. So as an example, if you've got uh, two four ohm, or let's, let's say you got one four ohm coil, you can only get four ohms out of that no matter what. So if you add another four ohm coil, now you've got either two ohms or eight ohms. So if you got two, two uh, four ohm subwoofers, you can only wire them to two ohms or eight ohms, period. There's no other way to wire them. But if you've got two dual twos, okay, which can also make a four ohm coil. So this, you take this subwoofer and this subwoofer, each one of them have two, two ohm voice coils. And you wire each one of those in series, you get four ohms again. That four ohms will either do two ohms or eight ohms like before. But you could also wire those in parallel. So if you wire them in parallel, you're gonna have two, two ohm voice coils wired in parallel to get one ohm, and then two over here wired in parallel to get one ohm, and now, you can wire those in parallel and get a half an ohm, or you can wire them in series and get two ohms. There's options. Uh, and depending on how many drivers you're going to run will dictate the ohm loads that you need to be able to work with to create a potential wiring scenario where your amplifier or amplifiers is, on, is seeing the ohm load that they need to see to operate within the perimeters designed by the manufacturer. I hope this was helpful. I just wanted to pass on an understanding. There's plenty of, of uh, available uh, videos out there to pass on knowledge. Knowledge being the end result of the understanding. Knowledge of oh, how many subwoofers to buy, what ohm loads to buy them in, and then diagrams showing how to wire them. That's a given. You can find that. What I wanted to do was pass on the understanding of how to think about what you're doing and figure out how to wire them and how to buy them. And, and, and so, again, teaching a man to fish is better than just giving you a bucket full of fish. <laughs>